You know, because uh, in the opening sequence, I, I did also put out uh, the information we get from people that, you know, it appears to them as though between Nigerians and security agencies, it's us and them. Yes. You know, because the military did set up a panel to look into cases, alleged cases of human rights abuses, uh, killings, extrajudicial killings. Is that the same case you see here where it's still a case of us and them? Because, I mean, if we say in communication, it's never complete until there's feedback. Yes. And now you also say, at the point where he was saying, well, if there's any such case, we will deal with it. But it seems to be hanging. How do they get across to you to sort that matter out? Actually, what he said is that if there's any such case, it's our responsibility to deal with it. He didn't say, he actually dismissed out of hand the existence of such cases fundamentally that's a problem so we, we can't assume we, we, that we can't assume into it. that there, because there's been no there's been no procedure put in place for looking at it or for what report we've been told that there is no report and there is none expected if there was that's almost a past tense situation and that's a flaw i mean i'm not sure it's totally just his own flaw i think it's a flaw in the general thinking that says uh, we reach conclusions and we conclude fast and anyone that has any opportunity to try and project that there might be something that's not right about it is an enemy or someone trying to pull us down. The practical reality is that every system made by human beings is not perfect. Every system, things will go wrong, like happened with the travel ban. People who are being turned back in the US who are not supposed to be turned back. Now, I mean, now the, the narrative goes as such, I am an American. Yes. You cannot treat me like this. Yes. I'm an American. Yes. Can't I say I'm a Nigerian? You cannot treat me like this. Well, you can say that, but you need to be backed off by, by things that show that you cannot be treated like that. Uh, and until uh, people start to act like it's an important... You see, we sometimes talk in Nigeria and we accuse Nigerians of being unpatriotic. To some extent, there is some element of it. But the truth is that unless you put a value upon being a Nigerian, and that value has to be put by our leaders overall, that being a Nigerian means you're an important entity. And this has to be projected by... It's one of the jobs of government, actually. It's one of the jobs of, profession, of official leadership to say, if you look at every organization, they come into place and success by the feeling of their own value. If you are in the IT world, for example, you need to see the way they talk about who they are. You need to see the way, if you worked in IBM in those days, IBM was the first organization to say you put on a particular kind of suit, you put on a particular kind of tie, because you are an IBM man. What they were doing was projecting a value upon the people. The Yorubas have a proverb that you can't sell your brother cheaply and want to buy him back expensive. That the value you put upon him is the value with which everybody else will look at him. And that's one of the gaps we have in Nigeria. We've not... We've looked at ourselves, and there's this, what I call, I don't know, paternalistic, uh, patriarchal form of leadership that we have. That when we hold positions of authority, whether it's in government or even in the family, that we give everything out, out of the generosity of our willingness. And everybody else is not important. You know, we, that, we, we do a hierarchical importance level. And therefore, the youngest in the family, for example, can't talk. <laughs> That's our structure. The people who don't have it are supposed to just say, Ranka Dede and go and move on with their business you know it's a concept that affects us even in our decision making and leadership and you find out that when we get into positions it then affects us because we then become we have a, this morning i was thinking about our tendency to arrogance in leadership it's so, a big so problem. What, what role will the national orientation agency play in i mean in putting up the image of nigeria such that one is able to have more confidence or respect for for nigerians when when we're at home and even when we're outside of Nigeria? I think it needs to start with recognizing what the problem is. I've always said that one of the biggest challenges we have in Nigeria, whether it's in terms of our self-image or our projections, our communication, our decision-making, is our willingness to engage in what I call rigor. That is, investigate the thing properly, find out the why. You know, there's a concept, there are a number of questions people ask in taking decisions. There's the why, the how, the when, the what. But the fundamental one is the one that we seem to not like to engage in Nigeria, the why. Because it's the smallest, but it's actually the bedrock of everything else. If you don't ask why is this reaction coming, and why do we have this situation, and be willing to accept the unpalatable truths at times because people will tell you the truth you may not like and it can be really bitter and it can be bitter 
If you are not willing to, then you can't begin to solve the problem. What we tend to do in Nigeria, if you're not careful, is we set out programs because the programs look nice. Programs have no ultimate objective. They have no clear-cut intention because they're not addressing a why. So we jump to the hows first and the what's. And because we don't have the why basis, you find that's why decisions in Nigeria are easy to put aside. We start a program, it runs for two months, six months, so a new government comes or a new minister is appointed and says, this is not my focus. So, does that then mean, if I could again I'll highlight the foreign affairs and the immigration policy of the U.S., does that then mean that from your submission, can we infer that he ended up asserting his office's position in terms of who can speak for the country Indeed. as opposed to just saying okay well if any such thing happened yes you hear from me or come forward by the way we're here waiting for you that, that's that that was the missing link the man on the street the man who's been affected who wrongfully may have been accepted you see we the, this issue of facing the truth is a very serious question we've got to be willing to recognize that even when you put everything in place something may go wrong and that willingness to address what, like you said, in communication, that's why you have feedback. I may think I've spoken to you clearly. In fact, it's possible when you get to the minister that you say, I meant that. So I'm willing to give him the benefit of the that he meant that. The problem is that he meant that, but he didn't communicate that. Okay, so if we then accept that, or I'm speaking generically now. Yes. Uh, something happens and there was an error, mm -hmm. and we openly admit, okay, I made a mistake in this, in yes. this uh, area, so it's my fault. Okay. I take responsibility for mm -hmm. it. What does that take away from, from one? It, it doesn't take away anything except for when you look at our perception of what leadership means. Never, for example, let me give you a simple example. In our culture, they will tell you that you never say the elder is wrong. I mean, that's absolute nonsense. The elder can be wrong. I mean, I mean I'm, not, I'm not, thank God I'm not a kid anymore. And I have learned, I've brought my children up with the idea that daddy can be wrong. Because I want them to have the willingness to correct themselves when they make an error. But when you have this, uh, what I call, Boju leadership, the elder is always right, even when he's wrong and doesn't know anything. And so somehow we've tied our self-esteem to never being wrong. And as far as I'm concerned, the only person being not being with never wrong is God Almighty. And until one human being shows me that he's God, and I don't believe he is, then he has a right not to be wrong. But it doesn't, it's what it takes away from us is the standards we have set for ourselves and how we have valued ourselves. When you value yourself as never being wrong, and you say that is one of the uh, prerogatives of my position, it means to admit that you are wrong or your an error has been made, is to say that you are a failure. So that's why it affects your self-esteem. But if, for example, like growing up with my children, I said to them when they were young, that number one, I said, Daddy doesn't know everything. 